Okay, well, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, just to be mindful of our time, um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'd like to welcome you all. Uh, thank you for taking the time for tuning in uh, this afternoon. My name is Fernando, and I, uh, I'm with the Region 9 Head Start Association, and I'm really excited to be your webinar host today. So uh, feel free to contact me via the chat option of Zoom uh, with any logistical questions you may have regarding audio. Uh, video or any connection issues uh, you experienced today. Um, just so you know, today's session uh, will be recorded and will be made available uh, within 24 to 48 hours. And you will be able to find a copy of this recording up on our YouTube channel, uh, which can be accessed via our website. Uh, a follow-up email will go out to all uh, registered attendees uh, containing a PDF version of a certificate of participation, uh, in case you need that, uh, as well as a link uh, to the YouTube channel in this video. So uh, keep an eye for, uh, for that email. If you don't receive it in 48 hours, uh, let us know and we're happy to send that over to you. Uh, now, without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Rosie Mackinnon from the University of Arizona Global Campus. Uh, and I hope uh, everybody enjoys the session. And now uh, take it away, Rosie. Awesome, thank you. If you wanna pull up the slides again, Fernando, that would be awesome. Um, <laughs> welcome everyone, my name is Rosie Mackinnon. I'm an education partnership representative with the University of Arizona Global Campus. We're super excited to be here today. We're super excited to have Dr. Newton Miller um, do his presentation. He's an amazing presenter and speaker. Um, so we're really excited. Um, if you didn't know, we actually have almost 500 current Head Start employees going to school at UAGC, um, which is really impressive. 80% um, of those um, students and employees are working towards their bachelor's degree program, which is awesome. Um, at, towards the end, I'll be getting into more about UAGC and the tuition benefit available uh, to Head Start uh, the Head Start community. Um, but if you want to move on to the next slide, I'll just be going over our quick agenda. Um, so this is the agenda for today. We'll be introducing Ed Condon, um, of course, our keynote presentation by Dr. Miller. And then I'll also be going over the Head Start employee tuition benefits. And then at the very end, we'll definitely leave time for any questions that you guys may have. All right, well, welcome, um, Ed, if you wanna take it away from here. Great, thank you. Thank you, Rosie, and uh, greetings to everyone who's joined us. I love seeing all the names of agencies from around Region 9, as well as beyond. I see South Dakota, and, and I saw also, I think, Alaska, and I think I saw another in there from, of course, Arizona, California. So please uh, let us know where you're from and the program you're with. And we're so glad to have you on this call. Um, the Region 9 Head Start Association is very pleased to partner with the University of Arizona Global Campus for a number of reasons. Uh, first, we were always are looking for partners who share and align with our mission. And the goal at Region 9 Head Start Association is to elevate the work that is done in our local communities. We really take quite a bit of pride in local programs, the great work you're doing at sites and centers through home visits, as well as the services you're extending throughout the community. We elevate and celebrate the work that happens in local communities, as does the University of Arizona Global Campus. And so this webinar today is really about giving you, providing you with some thoughts and inspiration on skills that you can take right back to your work, to your coworkers, that will help you advance 
uh, what's most critical in your local community. Uh, for Region 9, we are committed to uh, ensuring that every child has the opportunities to succeed in life. And we do that through bringing unique partnerships, unique programming, unique services to the Head Start region, whether that's our advancing advocacy training that we'll be doing uh, beginning in uh, late um, um, April, or it's our STEM Institute that will be taking place April uh, 12th through 14th. We really pride ourselves on trying to do unique professional development. Um, we're excited to have Dr. Newton Miller with us this afternoon. We had a chance to chat just a few minutes ago. I think you're going to find uh, his content inspiring on a personal level and also inspiring in that civic sense. You know, part of what we really need to be thinking about today is not just how we take care of ourselves, but how we take care of others. Uh, we know that uh, more and more important is how we citizen and how we reach to see no strangers, both in our families as well in our communities. And so part of our goal for you today is, of course, to keep on pushing the best that you can, but also to inspire you to take some risks, extend yourself and be a better coworker, a better a partner, a better community member. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to uh, Dr. Newton Miller. Look forward to hearing your presentation. And again, thank you to the University of Arizona Global Campus for their partnership. Outstanding, well, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. And as I share the screen, you guys, um, I um, just wanna say how honored I am to just have the opportunity to come and, 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 and speak with you. So something that you may or may not know is that your time is your most valuable asset. Um, so once you spend that time, you can't get it back. You know, so we have the, ob the obligation to use it wisely. So the fact that you're stopping what you're doing, I think the number I saw on there was, was about 170. The fact that you're stopping what you're doing to hear anything that I have to say out of these lips of clay is just such, such a great honor to me. Um, so I see it's rising 182 now. So just thank you, thank you, thank you for the opportunity. And my hope for you is that you grab some morsel uh, that you can take with you to educate yourself, motivate yourself and help yourself grow before this is over. But I'm going to warn you before I get started, I break all the rules of public speaking. I might say, um, a lot. I might code switch. I move with my body and gesture. I talk really quickly. I'm super ADHD. Sometimes I go down a rabbit trail, but I'll try to keep it on track for you today. But I want to warn you ahead of time because all that's probably going to happen. I, I did a, a, a TED Talk, um, and, 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 and I don't even tell a lot of people I did it, but when I did the TED Talk, it was like the most difficult thing for me. It flopped. It was horrible um, because I tried to fit in the mode that uh, they wanted me to fit in for the people who were preparing me for the talk. Ever since then, I said, listen, I'm just going to be me, and if me is not enough, then, you know, so be it. So let's just have a little fun today as we talk about keep it pushing, continuing your forward march of progress in uncertain times. So I gotta get old to the, to the title, keep it pushing. I grew up in Philadelphia, outside of Philadelphia in, in uh, some low income areas. We called it round the way, you know? So I'm from round the way. And there was a hierarchy of, of uh, authority in the communities where I'm from. And the old heads or, you know, the OGs, the old heads, they sat at the top, you know, of that hierarchy. And there was this one particular old head in my community round the way, his name was Mr. Streety. Now, Mr. Streety, he was a mechanic. He fixed everyone's cars. So he was always greasy, hands greasy, always had on overalls, you know, it was always old cars parked out, you know, by him. And he, he Mr. Streety, he, was, he, he smoked cigarettes. And he would take these two fingers and put the cigarette between these fingers. He put the cigarette in his mouth and he would talk, and I don't know how he did it, but that cigarette looked like it was super glued to his lip, you know, and just stayed there, right? I get so fascinated watching him right, talk that, like, after he finished, there was this delayed reaction before I responded to what he said. He probably thought that I had a cognitive processing disorder or something, I don't know, because I was always slow to respond. But the one thing that he said, always said, a lot of the old heads in my neighborhood said, they would say, they would, and you can't see my whole body, but they were kind of like, watch out there, young fella. You keep it pushing, you hear me? And they would do that. I mean, it was just something they did, right? And we used to laugh and joke and, you know, imitate them. But it wasn't until later in life when I saw the circumstances and situations 
in life would change. The wind and the weather uh, of life would change and your it, that it that belonged to you. See, my it is different than yours and yours is different than everyone else's. But whatever that it was, we had the responsibility. I have the responsibility to keep it pushing forward. And that's what they were trying to tell us in their language. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And as we get going, I want to let you know that there's two things that if we, if we don't agree or if you, if you can't see this foundation and everything I say after this, uh, it's going to be hard for you to catch on to. But those two things are this. I don't care who you are, what your sexual orientation is, what your race is, uh, your, your economic status, your age, your ability, uh, did I get them all, your religion, did I get all the, the, sub, the, the subgroups? I don't care what they are. I don't care where you come from, what your last name is, what you've accomplished, what you haven't accomplished. There's two things everywhere on this planet that you cannot control. And the first one is that time keeps on ticking, ticking, ticking. <laughs> you can't stop time from ticking. And the other thing is that the only consistent thing that happens in life is that something's going to change. So time and change are the only two things that I don't care who you are, you can't control on this, on this planet, anywhere on this planet. But you can manage how you handle yourself uh, within time and within change. And how you manage yourself uh, with time and change is going to impact every area of your life. Now, the American Society Association says that all of our lives are broken into about three uh, 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 areas. The first one is peace of mind, then there's effectiveness, and then there's prosperity. So we'll break down each of those three. Let's start with peace of mind. When you think about peace of mind, you think about, you know, consistency. You think about security or comfort. You know, everything's familiar. Move and smooth the way you want it to go. So you can, you know, you're like, you know, in Zen and everything is fine. But I just told you that there's two things that's going to happen on this planet. And one of them is that something's going to change. Well, that contradicts what we call peace of mind, which is familiarity and consistency. In essence, peace of mind and change are enemies of each other and they're continually to combat each other. So what do we do? Well, since we know change is gonna happen, then get ready for it. It doesn't mean you know what change is gonna happen or when it's gonna happen or what it's gonna look like. You just know it's coming down the pike. So you brace yourself for change because what you expect can't disappoint you. See, now I'm not saying, I said can't disappoint you. I didn't say that it won't be inconvenient. And I didn't say that it won't stretch you and, and, and make you have to step out of side what's comfortable for you or challenge you or require you to learn a new skill or to, to build a new network, but you won't be disappointed. So when you disappoint something, that's when you misappoint your expectations. And that throws you off mentally so that you can't move forward. So we wanna avoid that disappointment even though it may mean we got to work a little harder or, or, you know, be inconvenient. I can deal with that mentally um, as far as my peace of mind is concerned. But disappointment is another thing. The second thing I want to tell you about is effectiveness. That's the second area that the American Psycho the Association of Psychology says that, you know, exists in all our lives. So what that is talking about is are we on target with the things that we're doing with our hands? All of our goals, our dreams, our aspirations, the tasks, the projects, the things that are going on in our life, you know, are they running forward? In other words, is, is what that effectiveness is talking about. So um, if you can um, uh, uh, manage yourself and in, in, uh, in, in the time and the changes going on in your life, uh, then you can be effective in every area of your life. But there's three things that you have to do. The first thing you have to do is have a plan. Now, hold up, hold up, Miller. You just said everything's going to change. Now, how am I going to have a plan if everything's going to change? I don't know how to, how can I plan for what's going to change and I don't know what the change is going to, it's going to be. Well, that's a good question. Let me give you a scientific answer from my, my, in my science teacher days. So there was something, I think it's about 175, 200 million years ago called the Pangea. So the earth used to be one solid land mass. And then over years, those uh, tectonic plates began to separate into what we know now as the seven continents. So what I'm saying to you is that as the tectonic plates under your feet began to separate, right, you 
if you're on one of those continents, and matter of fact, they say that right now the continents are still moving, but I can't feel it, right? If I'm on one of those continents and it's moving under me, all I need to do is stand firm on the continent. So what do I mean by that? What I'm saying is that as the tectonic plates of your life begin to move around you, as pandemics to pandemonium situations you know, happen all around us, as we see political unrest and racial unrest, as we see different things taking place in our country, even now with what's happening with the uh, uh, people in, in Texas, you know, my heart goes out to them. All these things that are taking place, we have to create a plan that's based on principles or those tectonic plates. What I'm saying to you, and you don't make plans based on circumstances and situations because they're going to change. You make plans, plans based on foundations and principles. For instance, if you plant something, something is going to grow. If I give, I shall receive. Uh, uh, if, if, you know, a do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Work in equals work out. Those are principles um, that, you know, there's my dad used to always say, listen, eat the fish and spit out the bones. Keep the main thing, the main thing. That's what I mean by creating plans based on principles, because those things won't change. That'll, that'll give you the ability to negotiate and maneuver with, with the uh, circumstances and situations that happen with change. The next thing we have to do is to avoid abnormal use of the things around us. So number two and number three kind of go together. So what do I mean by abnormal use? If you do not know the purpose of a thing, then you are bound to abuse it or abnormally use it. Um, here's an example, I'll give you two. If I get up in the morning, get dressed and put my nice bow tie on and get ready to go to work and I jump on top of the refrigerator in the kitchen and I think that I can drive that refrigerator down the street, you know, the highway to work, I'm going to be sadly mistaken because a refrigerator is not purpose to do that. It can't do that. If I take my Microsoft Surface and I try to nail a nail in with my Microsoft Surface, um, I might get that nail in a little bit, but I can almost guarantee that I'm going to damage that Microsoft Surface beyond repair. So we have to know the, the um, purpose of the things around us. We have to know, you know, what they do and why they do them so we avoid misusing them and we use them to our benefit uh, so that we can keep moving forward in a positive direction. And in order to do that, we have to know what those resources are. I got to know who's been where I'm trying to go. I got to know who succeeded and who's failed so I can know what questions to ask them. And I can know that if they failed to watch from a distance and not do what they did, I need to know who knows about networks and finances. I need to know uh, 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 what, what services are available to me. I need to know my resources. We used to call that in my hood round the way where I grew up. We used to say, you got to keep your head on a swivel so you can see what's happening because things change quickly. And if you don't move with the change, you could get left or caught out there and find yourself in a dangerous position. So um, in essence, if you can do these three things, then you can make sure that uh, you're, you're living an, an effective life, though you're being effective in every area of your life. Now, the third component that the American Psychological or uh, psychological, I'm saying the wrong, APA, American Psychological Association uh, uh, had in their study uh, that is a component of our life is prosperity. So here's what they mean by prosperity. So they're saying prosperity in essence is um, uh, 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 coming from the word, uh, a Latin word, prosper us. Had to remember it for a second there. So prosper us, spelled P-R-O-S-P-E-R-U-S. -E and it simply means doing well. So uh, that second part of that word, parity, has the connotation that means a functional equivalence. So if you put it together, prosperity, am I operating on an advanced level, pro, an advanced level, am I operating on an advanced level well in every area of my life? Am I having functional equivalence of, of well-being in every area of my life. And that is what we're using for our definition of prosperity. So that means you have to address all of you, body, soul, and spirit. So I don't wanna get bogged down on this slide. Like I could talk an hour just about this right here. So just to move really quickly, 
and, 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 and I'll have my contact information at the end of, of, of the, the PowerPoint. So you can always contact me and we can always chop it up about some of these things and share resources. But as far as your body, I'm just going to say it to you like this. You need to make sure that you have some exercise uh, regimen, something where you're exercising your body. So I do a thing called Fit, Getting Fit at 50, G-E-T-N Fit, F-I-T, at 50. And it's on my Facebook, uh, uh, Newton Miller and, I, and, and you can and look at it. I do little 30 second messages every day. And inside those messages, I say something very consistent. I say, listen, you got to get up from where you are. Run, walk, crawl, jump, dance, just do something. Get your 30 in, right? And what I'm saying to you today is just do something. Get your 30 in. You got to be accountable to this physical body. It's our tool. It's what we need to accomplish all those great things that are in our mind and heart to do. You got to make sure you eat well. Now, I'm not one necessarily for dieting because I'm just not like that. But what I am for is healthy eating, having a healthy eating regimen. So I try to eat healthy instead of dieting. Then I don't have to worry about it because I'm from Philadelphia and I love tasty cakes. Anybody from the East Coast that knows what they are. So you got to be able to keep moving, eat correctly, and then rest. Make sure that you are replenishing, like giving your body time to replenish and, and uh, you know, restore itself. As far as our soul, man, it's broken up into three pieces. Emotions, will, and intellect. And I just want to take a second to kind of explain this to you. So many people do not know this or maybe won't uh, um, uh, admit it, but anytime something happens, our emotions and our environment are connected. So anytime something happens in our environment, we have a directly proportionate reaction in our emotions. When something happens in our environment, something happens in our emotions. And those things are directly proportionate. And all kinds of chemicals are released in our body, cortisone and all kinds of things that can wreak havoc inside of us. Now, some people do much better at not showing uh, that proportional uh, a movement in their emotions out, uh, externally. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it's not happening internally. So we have to be what's called emotionally intelligent. Um, I think, yeah, there's a book here, Emotional Intelligence, if you want to grab it. But um, you, you, you can be emotionally intelligent, which means simply this. You're aware of your emotions and how your surroundings are impacting your emotions and what it's doing to you. And more importantly, What's happening inside you is causing some type of reaction or some type of change. Emo being emotionally intelligent means I understand what that's doing to those around me. So in times, uncertain times, when things are taking place, we're going to get some proportionate uh, movement uh, um, within our emotions based on what's happening externally. So we got to be emotionally intelligent, understand that that's taking place and understand how our response to those emotions and external movement uh, uh, conditions is, is impacting those around us. And that is very, very powerful and necessary if you're a leader. It's very, very powerful and necessary if you work with children in any way because they're looking at you and depending on you. So you have to be emotionally intelligent from the inside out. As far as the will is concerned, you can see how I can bog down on this, this slide, right? As far as your will is concerned, that's your character. So when we talk about character, we're talking about not, not personality traits, you know, funny, things like that. We're saying character. Now, character is like those tectonic plates on the Pangea that I talked about. They stay consistent. Although those continents moved apart, the Pangea one piece moved apart and, and created those different continents, they were still that same landmass. So character is this. Uh, it's words like, um, like courage honesty, uh, 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 diligence, perseverance, you know, though, though, th those are character traits that don't change. No matter what the situation or circumstances uh, uh, are in your life, um, whether they're positive, negative, comfortable or uncomfortable, if you're a, uh, if you're a courageous person, you're going to be courageous. You're going to be courageous in uncertain times and in uncertain times. If you're an honest person, you're going to be honest no matter what. If you're a diligent person, you're going to be diligent and, and go forth no matter what. So in uncertain times, not only do we focus on our emotional intelligence, we have to pay particular attention to our character. Who am I? What am I? What is consistent about me? And we have to focus on being that thing. 
Focus on being courageous. Focus on being diligent. Focus on being honest. Focus on having integrity rather than all the little changing things that are taking place around us because of this pandemic, the pandemonium situation. And then the final thing is your intellect. Now your intellect is, 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 is the information that comes inside what I call your gates. So we all have ear gates and eye gates and, and you know, a mouth gate, a heart gate, a mind gate. We all have these things uh, where information and, and um, things that are taking place in our environment can, can enter us, uh, you know, affect us mentally and things of that sort. You have to guard your gates. You have to, uh, uh, when, when, when a change happens or when, when, when uncertain times happen, you have to find a way to get away from all of the external noise, get by yourself so you can make sense of what's taking place. And so you can filter and decide what is going to be fact and true for you that you drive and live yourself, you know, and live from and what's not. Uh, and many folks don't do it. I, you, you may have some friends, I know I do, who whatever the news says or whatever social media says, or uh, it, it's this group thinking happens and they sway from one side to another. And you can see the mental duress that they're in because they're, they're spirit man, their intellect, they're allowing too many things to influence it. And then finally, um, excuse me, their soul man. So finally, their spirit man, their belief system. And I don't want to get into, say, a deity or something that you believe in. I'm focusing on two things, self-image and, and self-esteem. Self, uh, um, so Miss Kelly Wood, she's the one who set this all together, put this all together. Now, I know Kelly used to work together in the building in uh, San Diego. And I know her to be a person that's always smiling, always cheerful and bubbly. I know her to be a go-getter, someone who... Um, is very diligent, very forward thinking. Um, she's going to stop um, no matter what she's doing, how busy she is, she's going to stop if you need her. She's going to give you an encouraging word. She's going to make you feel like you're the most important thing in, on the earth at that moment that she's talking to you. These are the things that I observed uh, uh, about Kelly. So anytime I think of Kelly, I expect those things. Those are the presumptions that I have. That is the image that I have of Kelly in my mind, right? So what I'm saying to you is that same image, the way I developed the image of Kelly because of what I've seen from her, I'm telling you to take you this kind of gross, you guys. I'm telling you to take your eyeballs out, pull them out your head, turn them around, and look at yourself the same way that I looked at Kelly. What do you expect? What do you presume? What are, you, what are your assumptions about yourself based on what you've seen, based on the relations, the interactions that you've had with yourself. That's your self-image, how you see yourself. Now, the American Psychological Association says that in adults uh, um, uh, 35 and over, nearly 33% of, of those adults um, have a negative or a poor self-image. We don't see ourselves in positive lights. Um, so we have to do some things on purpose to, to reverse that vision that we have of ourself. And our self-esteem is not how we see ourselves, it's how we feel about ourselves. And those feelings come because of thoughts and actions and things that we've experienced. Um, so we have to uh, be conscious about building our self-esteem and our self-image in a positive way. And one of the ways we can do that, and we're not gonna get into it, but it's something called self-affirmations. Um, you have to uh, 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 say to yourself, what it is that you want yourself to be. Every day, there are things that I, you know, I speak about myself over myself, no matter what anyone else thinks, you know? And, 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 and as I begin to move on, and we'll talk about success experiences a little later, as I begin to move on throughout the day, I'm already operating from that positive uh, premise. So as, as things come my way, uncertain times, whether they're long lasting or whether they're instantaneous, I already have a good image of me so now I can handle those things uh, more properly and, 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 and be more productive throughout the day. So what happens, you guys, um, if change takes place and it's unexpected? How do you handle that? <laughs> it's just out the blue, boom, it happened. Well, I told you from the beginning of this presentation that, you know, change is going to take place. It's the only consistent it's consistency we have. So if you're not ready for change to take place, it's because you're not paying attention to the principles of life that change is going to happen. So if you just expect that something 
down the road is going to jump out. If you could just, and this is a horrible example, but it's running through my mind, so I'll say it. If you're driving down the highway realizing that any time a deer can jump out in the street, then, um, then you're, you're a little more ready for it. It's easier for you to be in position to hit the brakes or to, to you know, swerve around without crashing or, you know, doing any, anything, you know, damaging yourself. A horrible example popped in my mind. I hope I didn't offend anyone, but I think you get the picture of what I'm saying. If you know change is going to take place and you're ready for it, you're in a better position to deal with it. So here's what you got to do. First things first, you got to get yourself away from all the external noise, from all the external chatter. And that external noise and chatter includes social media, includes friends, it includes family, sometimes children, husband, wife, whatever the case may be. And you need to get some quiet time by yourself. And here's the question I ask myself. I say, what the heck just happened? What was that? You know, and, 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 I, and I really think through, okay, what just took place? And is this long-term, short-term? How is this affecting my it keep it pushing how is this affecting my it and and what do i need to do so that i can keep it pushing despite all this right once you do that and you get that in your mind now you have this banner or this picture of what's taking place then your next step is to begin to categorize it or analyze it and evaluate it so let me use this example and, I, and we put it in what I call rocks, big rocks, small rocks, little rocks. Well, I don't say that, Stephen Covey says it. Have you ever heard of Stephen Covey? He wrote a book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. So um, in uh, what Stephen Covey, he passed away since then, but he has a foundation and, and I, I'm a part of it. If you can join it, it's great. There's tons of tutorials and resources on there um, that you can just kind of feed yourself with and continue to grow because I believe once you stop learning, you start dying. But one of the things uh, in, in, in his package that they showed um, is they, they had a, 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 a team go out into an, an urban, not an urban, but you know, inside a city. And it was a really busy marketplace. And they had a table there, they had a pile of $100 bills, and he had three tall cylinders, tall glass cylinders, right? And the challenge was for people going by, they could get $100 if they could fit all of these large rocks, these small rocks and the sand inside this cylinder, all of it without anything flowing over, they get $100. So they were out there for about eight hours, uh, the Stephen Covey team. And, you know, I don't know how many people tried, but only three succeeded. And for sake of time, what the three succeeded did, this is how they did it. They took the big rocks and they put those in the cylinder first. They looked at the cylinder with the big rocks in there. Then they took the little rocks one at a time and they began to strategically drop those little rocks in place in that cylinder around the big rocks to try to get them to fit in between the big rocks. Then they just took the sand and they just did what the sand does, poured the sand into the cylinder and the sand found its way around the big rocks and the little rocks and everything fit inside that cylinder. I'm telling you, you have to do that very same thing with your life. You have to take the time and stop and analyze and evaluate your life in, in, a, in a very realistic and, and truthful way and say what the big rocks are, what the little rocks are, and what the sand is. And you start with the big rocks. And as you start doing that, you'll start to see that you're able to check the list off of all the things that are going on in your life because now things are prioritized in a way uh, uh, that everything fits in that time that you have to fit every uh, with, within to fit everything. So we have a, a, a poll for you right now, and I'll kind of switch gears on this poll a little. So kind of track with me here. Um, it, uh, it, I want to know, um, and I, I'm not sure how the polls get up. I thought I don't know if I'm, but there you go. As we do this poll here, I'm want you to know, I want, I want to know, uh, uh, do you do anything to intentionally create success experiences in your life in any of these categories? You know, um, so I know I'm switching gears a little, but success is something that we need to have. That's what we're after. Keep it pushing where to be successful. So if in any of these areas, whether it's your physical exercise, uh, 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 your career, vocation, uh, financial discipline, do you do anything on purpose to create 
intentionally create success experiences for you. Uh, uh, so I exercise in the morning um, because it, it, it's a success experience for me. You know, if, if I can get through this 30 minutes and, and do everything I wanted to do, I succeeded. I don't know if we're having any answers to the poll yet, um, but if we do, just kind of curious to see in, in what areas people might be, okay, I like that. I like that. Most people maintaining home and family. Exactly. I thought that would be a lot of all of the above. That was excellent. There you go. That was Kelly's suggestion. I didn't even have there at first. I told you she was smarter than me, right? Excellent job. Excellent job. Thank you. So I like that. Thank you. That means you guys are really self-aware and that you're, you're showing, or you know that you have to create success experiences in your life. So this is what the next slide is about, which I'm actually saying to you, listen, on a daily basis, if you didn't click that, uh, uh, that poll, and even if you did, on a daily basis, you have a responsibility to yourself to create a success experience. No one defines what that success experience is in area. You have a responsibility to create one. And I suggest that you start with something very small. Um, so I just kind of listed some, some, some categories up there. They may apply to you. They may not apply to you. Um, I start my day off with a very small success experience. And here's the, why you wanna, here's the reason why you want to do that. If, and, and again, American Social, uh, Psychological Association, they say, listen, um, and, and it's also in a book called Habits, if you've ever read that book, um, if you do something once, the human brain, if you can do something once, it's easier to do it twice. Then it's easier to do it four times, then eight times, 16 times, 32 times, 64 times. Once you do something once, it's easier to exponentiate uh, the amount of times that you can do that thing. The, the problem is that that's not just positive things. That could be negative things too. So I want to command my day and I want to command my level of productivity uh, throughout the day so that I can be fulfilled and happy and healthy by starting my day with something that starts the success ball rolling. I want to snowball success and create this cycle of continuous success in my life. So you know what I do? Uh, when my wife doesn't beat me to it, I make up the bed. That's my first small success experience. I don't like making up the bed. And here's the deal. My wife makes up the bed so beautifully. I mean, she makes it up so great. It looks, I mean, you know, like the sheets and the, the blankets all straight. And she folds the blanket at the bottom of the bed. And we have all these pillows. And she puts them in, in a particular, if you take a picture of it, man, you can go on Pinterest or, you know, be in a magazine or something, right? So what I try to do is make the bed up just as good as her. You know, uh, I never succeed, but, you know, I make it up. And I can then kind of step back as you know, as I'm getting dressed on the rest. Like, you know, I made that bed up. Yeah, good. And very often what will happen is my wife will say, thanks, babe, for making the bed up. That very small success gives me the smile on the inside that I need to go downstairs. I, I haven't been to the gym in a while, and I have my own little uh, gym area here. I go downstairs and I get my workout in. I do a high intensity interval training. So I get my sweat on. I do a little resistance, maybe some abs. And guess what? There's another success experience. That one's a little larger. Now I'm feeling even more motivated and I can come upstairs, you know, and I get my meditation. I get my reading in, you know, and, and, and now, man, I got this momentum happening. If you know anything about physics, momentum cannot be created or destroyed, can only be transferred from one object to another. Now I'm on to my daily tasks for my job or, you know, my businesses or my books or any of the things that I got going on. And, and boom, I'm this juggernaut of success. So why did I take a time on that slide? Because you have a responsibility to create a success experience in your life. And it can something start with something as small as what you guys all said in that poll. It can be something that you didn't think of. And those of you who don't on purpose create a success experience in your life today, I challenge you to start it. You can start it right now. Make up your mind something small that you're going to do and do that on a daily basis. And then pat yourself on the back. Praise yourself forward and then immediately move on to the next thing. Now, a way to make sure that you continue to do that, I got this from a guy called Zig Ziglar, uh, uh, a very uh, popular public, uh, public speaker. He since uh, uh, passed away. He was about sales. I, just, I love to hear him speak, right? But um, you can catch him on YouTube. But he has something called the Commit Calendar Cross Method. And here's the deal. You might have a task or 
a goal, something you want to accomplish, something you want to do. I don't care what it is. I, I, you know, it, it can be, um, uh, I don't know, study or reading a book or, or uh, I don't know, spending time with your children. Um, I don't know, maybe you're knitting something or fixing up a house or I don't know, anything at all. Some task, some goal, something you have. You commit time to that task on a daily basis. It could be 15 minutes, 20 minutes, a half hour, 45 minutes, an hour. You commit that time. I don't care when it's going to happen. Uh, you know, I like to use a calendar, try to keep it consistent, but sometimes that doesn't take place you know, because we have a whole bunch of things we're juggling. But I'm going to put that half hour, 45 minutes, an hour in for that particular task every day. And then you get yourself a calendar, something that you can uh, uh, um, mark on. It could be an electronic calendar. It could be something on your wall. It could be a, a, a little book. I have a, I use a, I use a, a daily planner book, um, you know, anything, but it has to be something where you can physically see it. You can't just track this in your mind is my point. Got to be something you can pick up or click on and, and visually look at it. So that's called multiple intelligence. You got to get your visual in touch in, in, my, in, 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 in tact with this as well. And then you just cross off each day that you successfully committed that time to that task. Successfully committed. So if I said I was going to do 45 minutes and I only did 30, then I don't get to cross that off until I do that other 15. Now, I'm not saying if you did the 30 and not the 50, not the 45, then you don't get to cross for the day. No, the day's not over. And remember, we're about success here. So I find another 15 minutes and I give that 15 minutes to it and now I can cross that off. So here's what happens. If you can see the picture on the slide, you get yourself a bunch of crosses or, or X's or whatever you want to call them on your calendar, whatever that system of calendar is. So that means that at day 16, I have 16 X's on there that I successfully completed the task that I was diligent and consistent, that I was faithful to what I said I was going to do. I am successful at what the goal I set forth. So a lot of things are happening here. What happens is on day 17, I don't feel like it, right? But I look at that calendar and I have 16 times that I accomplished this task. You know what that tells me? I got one more. I can do 17. So if just for this day, if I just focus on 17, I get through that one. It makes it a whole lot harder for you to quit on, on yourself is what I'm trying to do, trying to say to you, is if you use that calendar cross, a uh, calendar, it's commit calendar cross method. So another thing we got to do in this whole system, other than just kind of identifying things, planning, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, not mis uh, abusing things, making sure you know your resources, um, you know, uh, being attacked by mind, body, and spirit, all the things that we shared so far, uh, using calendar cross commit, creating that success experience, is you got to continually ask yourself, continually ask yourself, what's next? What's my next goal? What's my next task? What's coming next? And here's why. I'm going to tell you a story. Have you never heard of Deion Sanders? Deion Sanders was a great football player. I think he played baseball too. Um, but his goal, he grew up, you know, uh, in some really rough environments. And uh, his goal was always to win a Super Bowl. Well, he did that, right? And there's an interview with him that the next day after that Super Bowl win was the worst day in his life. He said that was the worst day in his life. He was in the parades. He had the money. He had the fanfare. He had accomplished the thing. But on the inside, he was empty. And here's why. Because he didn't have a next. See, if you don't ask yourself what's next, when you, you're actually operating in what John Maxwell calls in his book, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, the law of the lid. So if I don't have a next, when I reach that plateau, boom, I can't go any further. I put a lid over myself. And if I'm operating in a lid and I, a lid and I have potential above that lid, then I'm living unfulfilled. And that's tough for me. And it caused Deion Sanders all kinds of problems. He got issues with drugs and the law and all kinds of things until somebody finally got him to see you don't have anything else to live for. What's your next? As he began to realign himself with what's next, he began to be another positive influence and, and, and he does a wonderful and great things for folks. So what's your next? You've got to always ask yourself, what's next? And as you get close to accomplishing what you're working on now, you should already start planning, already start calendaring, already start researching 
what's next? See, change brings opportunity. Although it's not something that we really want to deal with all the time, <laughs> you know, we see it as opposition sometimes and we push back on it, but it's not opposition. We should get excited when we see the opposition to change because what that means is that it's standing in front of a doorway and behind that doorway is a whole nother set of possibilities. It's a whole nother uh, 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 potential of, of, of what we can do and, and could do or, or what's around or not around. So we should get excited when we see that opposition because change means it's gonna stretch me from where I am to a, another place. I'm gonna find another way to do what I've always done. Point in case, if you look at the K-12 industry right now, uh, we're doing school remotely. That's not something that was done before, in, you know, in, in, in the, the, the volume in, in that is being done now. And, and in this year that we've been doing this thus far, it's not even a whole year yet, uh, or is it? I don't even know. Um, how much have we learned? You know, how much better are we at this? And will education ever really go back to what it was before? Once change takes place, things are stretched. And now that possibility is there. That doorway is there. So get excited when you see that opposition. And in those times of survival situations, in those pandemic, the pandemonium times like we find ourselves in now, like I said, where there's social unrest and, and, and civil unrest, where there's in some cases racial tension, where there's uh, uh, this organization blaming that organization, where there's political uh, 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 upheaval, uh, you know, and then there's a physical sickness, uh, an in, in uh, invisible virus that we don't even know really how to, to fight or avoid. In those survival situations, the time where it's, we want to say as human beings, you know, pull into ourselves and protect ourselves, that's the time where you need to be investment-minded because change is at your, at your gate. You're standing at the, at the gate of change, which means something new is about to happen. So what you need to do is be investment-minded in yourself. See, if you're not investment-minded now, then after this change takes place and we're in a new realm in society, then you're not ready to deal with it. You're behind the bar. So something that we don't always realize, and I'm going to say it, uh, um, and, and I'm going to ask you to say it, you need to understand that you need to invest in yourself. Why? Because you are your greatest asset. That's right, I said it. You, you right there, you are your greatest asset. So I don't know if you're in a place where they won't think you're crazy if you do it, but go ahead and put your hand on your chest or point to yourself and say, I am my greatest asset. Go ahead and say it. Come on, come on, say it. Say it a little bit louder. There you go. That's right. You are your greatest asset. You know what that means? That no matter what you invest in yourself, it's like insider trading. You're going to always get a return. I don't care what you do investing in yourself. It's always going to reap a return. You never lose it. It's never lost. So be investment minded in this, in this survival situation time. Invest in yourself. Get that education. Get that new certificate. Take that skill or, or that gift that you have and put it in action. Build that business. Expand that thinking. Write that play. Write that book. Be investment-minded in yourself right now in this survival situation. Because when the door opens and opposition is out the way, everything has what? Changed. So you have to be in front of that change. Change is telling you it's time for you to bring out of you that powerful thing that's in you. I got another poll for you. So in that poll, I just really want to know right now, how are you investing in yourself? I think it's some categories up there. We could put the poll up. There you go. How are you investing in yourself right now? So go ahead real quick. Don't even think about it. Don't just, just what comes to your mind, read the, the categories and what comes to your mind. Don't, don't let hesitation or evaluation, anything. Nobody can see you clicking anyway. How are you investing in yourself? What are you doing to make you better? What are you doing to take yourself from one level to the next level? How are you making sure that you're the greatest possible version of you that you can possibly be? Because I just want to tell you something. Uh, um, nothing can stop us but us. That's how powerful you are. There's a, there is a, a, a poem written by Marion Williamson, I, I, I believe it's called. And uh, it, was on, it was on the movie, A Kill of the Bee, if you ever saw that movie. 
and she read the play. But the play, I mean, the, 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 the poem says, who am I to dim my light? And I'm paraphrasing you guys. Who am I to dim my light so that someone else can feel better about themselves? I'm powerful beyond measure. You're powerful beyond measure. So how are you investing in yourself? Can we see the categories, please? Uh, I mean, the, yeah, there you go. Outstanding. It's coming up. There it is. Oh, I love it. Personal development, books, seminars, activities. That's what I would have clicked as well. Okay, we got some people talking about educating themselves, going back to the school or you're in school, working on a trade. That's what I'm talking about. That's what perfecting an existing skill. Now, that's beautiful. That's entrepreneurialism. That's something that no one can ever take away. You know, I love it. I love it. Financial seeding, uh, uh, you know, establishing your own business and things like that. That's something my wife and I are building our brand and doing some things. We have a couple of books, Why Some Seeds Don't Grow, a, a, a Baggage Claim, a book about marriage, some different things. She has a whole a line of children's books uh, uh, for, for uh, people of color and single children of color, Ami's World Collection. And I love those. I love that one. I need to work on this. Well, you going to work on that. Thank you for that one. Do I close it or do you? Thank you very much. We're going to move to the next slide. And I got to get out your way because I know I'm probably over my time. But just to recap everything we said, I told you guys I talk fast and I break all the rules. Hopefully you were tracking with me. But how you manage your time, uh, 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 how you manage time and change is going to uh, impact, determine how everything in your world is, is, is moving. Because we cannot control time or change, we have to manage what we do with ourselves and manage that time and that change to be uh, uh, productive in every area of your life. And those areas of our life that we talked about were peace of mind, effectiveness, and prosperity. Remember that if you expect a thing, it can't disappoint you. So if you remember the change is going to take place, if you remember the time is going to keep moving, then you can't be disappointed when stuff comes your way. Didn't say you wouldn't be uncomfortable. Didn't say you wouldn't be inconvenienced. Didn't say you weren't going to have to stretch and, and work on a thing, you know, uh, to make yourself better. But you won't be disappointed. You can keep your mental, your mental stability and continue to move forward. Listen, you need to take time to block the noise. Get by yourself and evaluate what's happening. Ask yourself that famous question. What the heck just happened? What is this? And analyze that thing. Uh, 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 evaluate it. Find your big rocks. How does this affect my it? Now, you can't do that on social media. You can't do that in crowded rooms with friends. You can't take the advice and the input from everyone else because your it is different than their it. So that's the time where you have to think for yourself and be honest and evaluate your stuff. And you have to find out what your big rocks are because your path and your purpose is different than theirs. And then prioritize those things and start checking stuff off. Make your day smoother. Make your children happier. Make your house run smoother. And start building yourself by doing what? Creating a success experience. Create that success experience in your life. Uh, uh, starting with something small. Because you want to become a juggernaut of success. You want to snowball the success in your life such that you're creating what I call a cycle of continuous success in your life. And then one tool that you can use to do that, we stole from Zig Ziglar, is that commit calendar cross method. I suggest you do it. It sounds very trivial, but I'm telling you, I don't always want to work out every morning or, or every day, but I look at that calendar and I say, man, I got so many such and such years in. I, I'm, not, I'm not skipping the day. I'm not going to be my enemy today. I'm going to be my asset. So Last thing I want to ask you real quick, um, um, uh, 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 what is it called, poll for you, is that throughout this um, uh, uh, presentation day, I talked a lot, I said a lot of things, right? And, and hopefully I had your mind moving fastly, uh, you know, all around the place, right? And, and this is a yes or no question on purpose. As I was talking today, has anything crossed your mind? Has any idea crossed your mind? Has any image, has anything crossed your mind that you uh, um, put down and know you need to pick back up or something you've been meaning to pick up or some idea or something that you can do to move yourself to the next level? I don't know what it is. I, it, 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 school, I don't know, uh, relationship, finances. Is there something, some task, anything? It, 
cutting the grass, I don't know, <laughs> anything at all, since I started talking, has anything crossed your mind of something that you can do that will move you from the level where you stand right now to another uh, uh, in any and every area of your life? Just a yes or no answer. I think I gave enough wait time for someone to click yes or no. Can we kind of see what that looks like? Whoa, love it. Love it. I got 130 yeses. So you just set yourself up. As I get out your way, here's what I want you to do. I want you to get that thing in your mind, right? And you got to physically do this with me, you guys. Uh, this is, this is, you got to do it with me. So you got to get that thing in your mind, whatever that thing is. And I want you to reach up and grab it and pull it down, pull it close to you. Come on, reach up. Now, if it's a big thing, you got to reach up with two hands and grab it and pull it down. Get that thing. Get it, get it, get it. Not I don't see everybody's not getting it. There you go. Get it. Pull that thing down, right? Pull it close to you, right? Get it in there. Make sure you got it. You got it? You got it? All right. So now what I want you to do is I want you to take that thing and I want you to put it down in front of you on that piece of paper that you have. And if you don't have a piece of paper, get one. And I want you to write it down. Write it down right now. Whatever that thing is, write it down real quick. It should only be a few words. It's not no whole paragraph. It's a thing. Write that thing down. Write it in underneath that thing. I want you to write one and then two and then three. Three things. And I want you to now, right when we finish this, I want you to write three things that you can do within the next two weeks so that you can accomplish that thing that you just pulled down. That's your thing. I want you to understand something. You just didn't come up with that. That's the thing that you're meant to do. If you see it, you're supposed to be it. So now write down three things that you can do to start accomplishing that thing that you saw. And they're not, not big things, because you need to get these things done in the next two weeks. So don't write down, you know, save $10,000 or rent a building or anything like that. No, I want you three things. One of them can be research what's needed. That's a thing. Another thing can be, you know, I don't know, uh, talk to an agency. Find out how someone else is doing it. Whatever that thing is. The other thing could be contact Rosie or Kelly so you can enroll in school. I don't know. Whatever it is, get those three things on that sheet of paper and you commit to, to doing something every day to get those three things done. Give yourself two weeks and then each day you do something towards accomplishing those three things, you put a check mark next to it. So that on that sheet of paper, that same sheet of paper, you have the thing you want to do, three tasks that you need to do to accomplish it. And then each day, it should be a check mark or an X that you're doing what you need to do to accomplish it until it's done. Can you do that? That's your homework. If you do that, I guarantee you that you're on the road to creating a success experience. You're on the road to making a successful way of life and you'll be able to keep it pushing in these uncertain times. Um, as I get out of your way, you guys, uh, I don't know if I bored you enough or if I took you over too many, you know, my ADHD uh, got on your nerves um, uh, or if I'm yelling too much. Uh, but I get excited about this stuff when people have the opportunity to be better, to be the best version of them. Um, we're going to be doing another webinar. I believe it's next Thursday at 2 p.m. Um, and you're, you're welcome to, to join us. I'm going to be talking really about uh, uh, the title is called Education, a Mandate not a request. So it's a black history perspective of, of, of what education kind of, kind of really means uh, from a black history perspective. So we'll share some history, we'll put some things in perspective. And, and um, it's not just for black folks. Uh, I think it's good information for everyone because that's how our society has succeeded with everyone. Listen, you guys, uh, here is my information, my email, um, uh, uh, newton.miller at uagc.edu. If you need anything, if you just want to, you know, chop it up, kick the willy bobo. If you have some questions, if you need some resources, go ahead and email me. I, I reply to everyone. That is my phone number. You can text me. You can call me. I respond to everyone. My, I'm, I'm, on, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, that's my website there, Dr. Newt 2. And I have a YouTube channel, Minute of Medicine for Your Mind, where I try to do a little motivational method, uh, message, um, two minutes or less. Um, you, you can you can jump on that as well. Listen, I want to get out of your way because I know I'm over my time, but I hope that you grab some you grab some morsel that you can take with yourself to educate yourself, motivate yourself, and help yourself grow. And as usual, my friends, please, please, please make it a great day or not. But remember that choice is always yours. I'm Dr. Newt. 
And this was a minute of medicine for your mind. Thank you for listening. Look, I broke the internet. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Dr. Newton Miller. If you're able to stay on um, and you have a moment, um, we're gonna go into UAGC. Um, maybe you're curious about going back to school. If you think a college degree would change you, um, we do have a tuition benefit available for Head Start employees and immediate family members. Um, so I know it's super hard to follow Dr. Miller. He's amazing. Um, right now, Kelly's putting in um, a link if you would like more information. Just a little bit about us. We are 100% online, so we are more flexible. Um, you only take one class at a time. Um, yes, it is considered for, it is for early Head Start as well, not just Head Start. I saw that in the chat. Um, this is the picture of our landing page uh, that's just for Head Start employees and um, family members. Uh, Kelly's going to throw that in the chat as well. Um, if you want to go on to the next slide, Fernando, thank you. Uh, we have multiple degree programs, not just in education, um, even though we'll, I will highlight those in a second, but we have business degree programs, we have healthcare, we have communication, applied behavioral science, science um, would be relevant to education as well. Um, if you want to go into the next slide, <laughs> trying to be fast for the sake of your guys' time, um, we, we do have one of the five best online bachelors in child development programs in the nation. So we're super, super proud of that program. Um, we also have associates degrees in education from early childhood education all the way up to our PhD program in education. Um, of course, we have other ones such as early childhood education. Um, we have education administration. We do have graduate programs and master, master's degrees as well. So if you already have your bachelor's and you're looking to add another one, um, we do have those programs also, master in education. Um, MBA even is popular. We have leadership programs as well. Um, Dr. Miller, I know that was a lot since you are the lead faculty member in the department of education, do you have anything you'd like to add to this slide? Oh, you're on mute. I know, how about that? That's always embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess what I can say to you um, about the college, of, well, we used to call it college of ed, it's now Department of Education and Liberal Arts, um, it's especially the um, early childhood folks. Now the faculty is a very diverse faculty all over the country. Um, everyone has been a practitioner has uh, either run a center, worked in a center, or worked in the um, early uh, uh, elementary level. Um, our, our program chair for those programs is a, a teacher of the year um, in uh, California. Um, she, I think it was LA district and LA county, both of them. Um, she's a fantastic person. Um, I, I can only tell you that those, those, I think that those programs are the highest how to say this, we've graduated the most number of professionals in the early childhood arena uh, for a private institution. I think it's like two or three years straight. Um, the last thing I'll say about our programs, and that's just early childhood, I work with Ed Studies, but all of our programs in Dell, we call it, um, um, we have built-in ways to make you successful. So if you're a little worried about thinking whether you're going to be able to finish or you know how the professors are going to be most of them are just like me. They're fantastic people, if I don't say so myself, you know, but really what it is is we want you guys to succeed. So we do whatever we can to help you succeed as far as deadlines, as far as helping with writing. Uh, you know, we know that you're juggling a hundred things in your life. So please consider the programs. If it's just an inkling in your mind, call, talk to us. Uh, you can reach out to me or anyone and, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll get you set up or we'll let you know what you need to do. All right, I've talked a lot and I'm just going to be quiet now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Miller. If you want to go on to the next slide, Fernando. Um, so for Head Start employees and their immediate family members, we do have a tuition benefit available of 25%. So that is a 25% tuition savings um, or discount. We also waive all required course material fees. 
um, which is a huge expense. We know nowadays books are expensive. Um, that's a big savings. We also have the tech fee waiver, prior learning assessment fee waiver. And then again, um, if you have a child, a parent we've seen, um, or a spouse who's interested in going back to school, they would be eligible for the 25% benefit in addition to those other um, waivers that I covered. If you would like um, to get in touch with an advisor, maybe you're curious, maybe you wanna take that next step. Um, even if you're not interested in going back to school for a few months, you always can chat with one of our advisors. Feel free to scan the QR code that's on the screen. Um, you can maybe talk to them about financial aid, you can talk to them about um, how long it's going to take you. Maybe you do have transfer credits. Maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe um, you're curious just about courses and the structure. The advisors are there to help you. So feel free to scan that. Um, I believe Kelly put it in the chat as well, the link to that form. Um, we'll be in touch either way. And then if we want to go on to the last slide, I know we're really short on time. Um, we just want to thank you guys so much again. Um, again, I'm I'm like a liaison, I like to call it. So I work with Head Start um, Association employees. Um, so feel free to reach out to me. Um, I saw a few of you signed up for our March webinar series. This goes into a deep dive of UAGC. So maybe you're not sure yet, you're on the edge, you're thinking about going back to school, but not quite there yet. The webinar is a great place to start. Um, the webinar, again, will be covering more about the benefit, um, more about our degree programs in depth, um, and then what the online school format looks like, because I know it's scary going back to school. Um, and then finally, um, if you or your location, if you think that um, they would benefit in hearing more about the, about the tuition savings that we offer Head Start employees, feel free to reach out to me as well. Um, I do a lot of different presentations, not as great as Dr. Newt's, uh, but um, to let your employees and your site know about um, their opportunity to go back to school. So thank you all so much. Um, so, oh, Rosie, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt, but I, I'm mm -hmm. looking in the question piece and there's a question in here that says, are the benefits for any Head Start program across the US? Yes, so it's national, so not just um, not just Region 9, all the different regions, uh, these benefits will apply to them. The 25%, the tech fee waiver, the uh, required course materials waived. So all across. I saw Ed mentioned that there was someone from South Dakota in here. Um, so all Head Start communities. All right. And I think people are, re are requesting a recording. So hopefully that's going to be available to folks. Yes, it will be. That's all I see in the question piece. And uh, Kelly's doing an awesome job of answering everything else in the chat, excellent. Yes, shout out to Kelly. Um, Kelly also works with um, Head Start uh, Association employees. She's been working very closely with Ed and Fernando. Um, and I just wanna thank Kelly. She's been a great um, mentor to me personally as well. <laughs> awesome. Great. Well, I just wanted to take a moment to just thank uh, our presenters today, Dr. Uh, Miller and Rosie, for your time. Um, just to remind everybody, since uh, I'm glad to see that everybody's eager to get the recording, uh, we'll be emailing a link uh, to the recording once it finishes uh, processing within 24 to 48 hours. So expect that link coming through uh, early next week so you can revisit all this great information. Um, if you have any questions for, for Rosie or for Dr. Miller, uh, I'm going to put our email here in the chat real quick, just so you can uh, get in touch with us. And we're happy to uh, forward that information uh, over to them uh, so they can follow up. Uh, once again, not to take too much time, I uh, just want to thank, uh, you know, the University of Arizona Global Campus for their partnership. Uh, and uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And we'll hope to see you on the next one. Thanks, everybody.